Here she goes, boys. Good morning, guys. Welcome back to the channel. Last day of the weekend here. It is, like I mentioned yesterday, it is gonna be hot today. It already feels extremely hot. So, uh, goal for today is to start working on the first gen. As everybody knows, we have a transmission and a rear ready to go in this thing. Uh, definitely gonna need some drivetrain modification, probably some little details here or there that are gonna require uh, not quite bolt-in procedure. So, the other thing that I did mention the other day, that Calvert Racing, Caltrack Racing sheet that we need to give them all of our information to get a set of custom cow tracks for this thing basically my plan is to get the bed off because not only is it going to help us get that stuff apart but it's also going to help us uh, figure out relocating the rear shocks so the second gen axles have shock locations that one goes towards the back one goes towards the front on the other side as kind of everybody knows the first gens kind of have this funky setup I shouldn't say everybody knows, not everybody might know this, but the shock location on the first gen, as you can see, has a little bit different pattern. They use the uh, bottom sides of the um, leaf spring mounts to mount, and they use that crossbar. So a little bit of different pattern, definitely gonna have to relocate and figure out some shock stuff. So getting the bed off will give us a better idea of how to mount, we might even need to put a new bar across to uh, mount them on the top, but that's where we're gonna start today. We're gonna try and get the bed off get that out of the way and uh, start getting everything apart. So that is the plan and that is where we're gonna start today. You guys have heard me talk about this before, but when you've got a project that you've got multiple different things going on and it's kind of a more of a build rather than just one part at a time, it's really important to have a goal. So the goal for today is to get that apart, get the Caltrack racing sheet done, anything beyond that, it's kind of a lazy Sunday, so Greg A is kind of feeling like not doing a whole lot, but we're gonna press forward, we are gonna get something done, but setting small goals each day, if you got a project kind of like this, it, it helps you feel a little bit more accomplished, and then once you get done with that, you just keep rolling. But anyway, that's the goal, that's where we're gonna start. I've never taken a first gen bed off, but I can only assume that there's a couple bed bolts, gotta undo the filler neck, probably some wiring in the back by the tail lights, and we'll see how heavy this thing is. Me and uh, me and Andy, who's at the gym currently getting his pump on, gonna try and see if we can get this bed off. We might need it. We might need an extra hand though. The other thing I forgot to mention is these are John's big jacks that we were using for the POS Dodge. But uh, I do want to get a set of my own. So I think we're gonna get these wheels and tires off. That, as a lot of you guys saw at the event don't turn worth a crap. We're going to get them off and get this thing pretty much on jack stands or on the race ramps for the time being until we can get our own jack stands and lifting that up will really help getting the transmission out because it is too low to the ground to even try and work on getting that out. Boys, let me tell you, it is a hot one today. It is definitely, whoo, boy, is it hot. We had to grab a full strength today. Uh, actually, from the people who just picked up that truck. Thank you very much, guys. I was very much appreciative of having one right now. So, uh, pretty much, we're ready to go. The bed is ready to come off. Got the wheels off, got it on jack stands. We're gonna throw the bed over there on those pallets. And we got the bed bolts out. Pretty much everything that came off is eight bed bolts. There is one here, one here, and then two in the back. So those, got some electrical plugs like I mentioned, and the trans cooler that's mounted up underneath the bed. We dropped that down, and we are pretty much ready to go. All we need now is some strong backs to lift this thing off. Well, here she is, guys. Of course, Greg forgot to flip the camera on, but my dad and the wife, Allie, happened to give us a hand me and Andy and them got the bed off lifted it up actually wasn't too bad I think my third gen short bed is a lot heavier than that thing so not too bad uh, basically now gonna start to take everything apart did happen to get the bottom hanger nut and the hey how are you I don't know who that is but got that nut off as well so pretty much the leaf springs can come out what's nice about the first gen it looks like there's quite a bit of space that i think this bolt can actually go right through without having to mess with the gas tank again i think on second gens the gas tank has to get out of the way for that bolt to come completely out so the whole reason besides actually changing the rear axle to get this apart is the bushing diameter 
we need to measure that so then they can make us a new inner bushing. The Caltrax use a like a solid non-rubberized bushing. The hangers kind of come down, kind of tie into everything kind of right like here. So that's where we're at. Basically now just gonna blow the whole thing apart, hopefully get the rear axle out, get the leafs out, keep moving on. Alrighty guys, here she is, all broken down and apart. Got the uh, rear shocks off, got the U-bolts that hold the axle in, and also got the front part of the leaf springs down, and I'll explain to you about this whole bushing thing here in a second, but the rear is pretty much almost ready to come out. Uh, we do just have to undo the uh, drive shaft, get that out of the way. I've got it supported now by jack stands. The frame is actually supported now by these bigger ones in the back so that the uh, leaf springs can basically droop and hang down there. So pretty much ready to grab some dimensions on this thing, but we do have to take apart this first part of the leaf spring here. So. As your leaf pack, your main spring here has this rubber bushing with the pin and basically which slides up into here and your bolt goes through. That's what kind of supports it and that rubber bushing kind of, you know, gives you a little bit of flex in there. So what the Caltrax do is they replace this entire piece. You can see there's even a metal sleeve right inside there. So that metal sleeve, this pin, and this whole rubber bushing need to come out. And what happens is they give you a solid bushing to basically press into the front part of this uh, main uh, leaf here. And then it basically goes back up and gives you those drop down brackets. Oh, let me let me go show you the O5 here for a second. That might give you a better idea on exactly what I'm talking about. So here's a little better look. Right up here you can see that's the top part of the leaf that comes up into that same drop down bracket. This main hoop right here has a solid bushing in it that gets pressed back up. Then these brackets go through that main bolt here as well. And then you can see come down to this attachment and then it actually rides on the top part of your leaf pack right here. So when the rear wants to preload and push this way, puts pressure here and then ends up putting tension here on the top part of your leaf pack. So these guys are really experts in leaf spring racing and they have figured out that this launching on the drag strip is a big advantage of the way this system works. So that's what we're going with and that's why you basically need to remove that whole entire bushing out of that first part of the leaf pack, press in their solid bushing and kind of set it up kind of just like how we have here. This one is pretty much almost done all we have left to is basically get that metal sleeve part around the uh, outside there out, which we can punch out. So in the instruction manual, uh, they're going to tell you that you're going to need to take the whole leaf assembly out and get those taken to a shop and get pressed out, get the new bushing pressed in. Now, I've done a couple of these. I've not used a press once just because it's not available to me, and sometimes it's not always the easiest taking the whole leaf pack out of the truck. In this case, I don't really wanna mess with the back if I don't have to. So the way I've done it before, and again, gotta use what you got available to you, especially if it's on a Sunday, and of course, there is always a better way to do this. So no judgment. So here's what we got. Here's what I've done before. That rubber bushing, that isolator bushing, what I've done before is just drilled all the way around it and then that bushing will push right out if you drill enough relief holes in it and that is the way that I have done them. So basically only requires you to drop the front part down, drill out that bushing. So in the process doing it this way you may definitely sacrifice some drill bits but this is the way that I've done them. This is what's available to me. As long as the job gets done, that's all that matters. So that's what we're gonna continue on doing. Once that's done, we're just gonna basically fill out that sheet, all the dimensions and everything, and that way Monday morning we can call and get that stuff coming on the way. And that's pretty much was our goal for today, is to get this thing done, get that sheet done. Alrighty, so if you're gonna do this the quote unquote backyard way, if uh, you don't have a access to a press, on a weekend possibly, once you drill out that uh, rubber isolator part, push the pin out. You might actually need one of these seat clamps too to help you push that out. This last little part here, which you can see, what I usually do, and it works out good, it only took me a couple, took me a couple minutes. Take your Sawzall, cut a little 
line down the middle of that, not all the way through, just enough to crack this little thin little bushing here. Then just drive a punch through it, crack that all the way through, then just a little tap and this piece will basically pull all the way out. And now you have your bare piece. We need to measure the diameter of this with our hole diameter, that way they can make us a solid bushing piece. Dimension sheet, pretty much all set, ready to go for a phone call on Monday, which is tomorrow. So we gotta get ready for Monday. So we're wrapping up kinda early today, guys. It's about 5, 5.30. Dinner tonight is at Snap-on Ryan's household. So we're gonna get cleaned up here, but it's pretty much, pretty much looks the same. Had to put it back together slightly to get some different measurements, but tomorrow I think the plan is we'll get this rear out, get the trans out, um, get starts cleaning up some of this stuff. I did happen to start cleaning the adapter plate uh, with our bombs away, get that all cleaned up. Probably going to need some wire wheel action on that, but for anybody who wants an awesome degreaser, Wab bombs away is about the best i think in any in my opinion you're gonna get poor first gen maybe we should just put a flatbed on it not the other thought and plan that i did have is the second gen axles the shock location actually comes up kind of right here and on the other side kind of goes forward if i could flip that other one back around we could actually kind of go straight up and down almost with our shocks and kind of go right to where the factory shocks were right here maybe not here but maybe we could move the hole out here they could actually come straight up and down and we wouldn't have to do too much with making another bar in here or anything like that i think what will work is just coming straight up somewhere into here so i think that will work for that uh, we'll get the cow tracks ordered tomorrow in the near future we need to start the daunting task of taking all of these pulling stuff off of this axle it's going to require many uh, many a cutting wheels and many flap discs i can already see it but all that has to get cleaned off the axles the rear gasket has to be resealed and we'll start putting that together the only unfortunate thing about the cow tracks is, yes, we can take this apart, we can get this blasted off, and we can get that rear ready to go, but I can't really reassemble the front part of the leaf springs until I get those bushings and everything else. So hopefully they tell me that they can cut everything, get everything custom made in a day or two. And then I think they are in California, I wanna say. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but they're not on the East Coast, I know that. So even if they get the parts made in a day or two, uh, it's still going to be probably three to four days shipping. So it would be awesome to get the Caltrax by the end of the week, but I'm not really sure. Tomorrow we'll figure out that and find out a little bit more detail on when we can get those. Because once those are in, once the rear is pretty much prepped and ready to go, and once the transmission's in, the other thing we're going to be waiting on is the drive shaft guy. So I've already called him, let him know kind of what we're doing, where we're at. Um, the roll, that, that slip yoke for the end of the transmission should be in definitely this week. That was in stock, so I ordered that. And so waiting on the Caltrax and waiting on the drive shaft guy are going to be our two hinge points to get this thing back running and driving. So we're gonna do everything we can on our end to make sure that we are done, prepared, and ready to go. That's the main reason why uh, I wanted to get the dimension sheet done by the end of this week so we could first thing call, get that ready to go. Because, because who, I mean, give this video a thumbs up if you guys wanna see this thing just blasting down the street. I mean, my fondest memory of this truck thus far was that really big burnout that me and Jesse did when we first locked up the rear because this was an open Dana 70. We, uh, me and Russell, the repairman, locked that up and we did a really huge burnout. I really wanna get back to driving this thing. Anyway guys, that is gonna do it for this upload. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back tomorrow. Hit that like button before you leave. Subscribe if you have not already. Time to go eat dinner at Ryan's house. See ya.